The following is a production of New Mexico State University. Melissa Tapia at the Rio Grande Botanic Garden shows us some water efficient plants. Well, we have the chocolate flower. Oh, I've been smelling that all day. It smells good. The chocolate flower uh, blooms all summer. Uh, it only blooms early in the morning. As soon as it gets hot, the flowers close up, but yeah. they come bright and early in, the next day. In the morning, it invites you morning. outside. It can self-seed and spread around a little bit, but that's kind of good. Right. And you've got some other things here. I see the lamb's ears. We have lamb's ears. The most pettable plant in the landscape. It's a great plant. It's very soft. Um, it uh, blooms pretty much in the, through the summer. Mm -hmm. uh, and it has a great gray foliage color. Yeah, after it. it blooms, you can cut it down and just have a nice ground cover that's soft gray green. Right. And I see you've also got uh, the uh, snow and summer. Snow and summer. Snow and summer is great. A good early spring bloomer. Uh, nice white flowers. It makes a nice gray mat after the tops removed, after the flowers right. are cut off. A nice gray mat. It's a, it's a real pretty plant. I like it. Excellent ground cover. You got the matte daisy in here as another ground cover. The matte daisy is one of my favorites. It takes it a while to open up. As soon as the sun hits it in the mm -hmm. morning, then it'll, it'll, the petals will open. And it, uh, it blooms um, spring to midsummer. Okay. So that gives you a pretty long season. Yeah. Otherwise, it's a nice, very fine textured ground cover. And it is a uh, pretty low water too. And then I see you've got the golden current here. We talk about some of the taller things. The golden current, uh, it's a, a great shrub um, and it also produces berries for the birds. And those are tasty if we eat very them too. Tasty. And the flowers are very fragrant in the, the spring. The flowers are very early, spring. early spring. And you've got Oh, the cherry sage, cherry which is not related to the Artemisia sage. It's a salvia related to the cooking sage. Right. And uh, one thing with uh, the salvia gregii is that we've also learned to cut it back really hard in the spring, and you get a better compact uh, little shrub and uh, n not a whole lot of dead growth. It's not as leggy then, so that's really a better way. Right. I, I, I prefer it that way. And then you've got some of the lavenders. Some of the lavenders. We have three lavenders. We have Spanish lavender. Uh, it's got a, a really nice uh, flower, but it doesn't have the fragrant, fragrance as the Providence lavender mm -hmm. and the English lavender. So which one do you like best? I like the Providence lavender because it's tall uh -huh. and it has a longer spike. And how well do they survive here? They do great. One thing about the lavenders, everybody thinks, oh, they take a lot of water. Well, they don't. Actually, the lavenders do better with less water than more water. And I've heard of it being grown in Taos, so it's pretty hardy throughout the state. It's pretty hardy throughout the state. And then, oh, I'm watching their uh, desert willows growing up, getting ready to bloom. Okay. They're not ready yet, so there's something to follow. You've got a lot of grasses, ornamental grasses okay. in here. Um, I like the ornamental grasses. There's something we don't use enough of in our landscapes. Right. I think it's great. The grasses just give everything a soft texture. And they provide kind of an accent. accent. Even though they're green, but through the winter, they'll turn interesting colors. And also, in the fall, uh, if you leave the, the plumes on, you'll have them all winter. Nice seed heads which nice provide seed heads. winter interest and in many cases attract the birds into the landscape during the winter. Correct and when there's nothing else blooming in the landscape you still have those nice seed heads you know. Okay and I see a vitex, a vitex which is a chase tree which is a chase. beautiful flowering pretty much through the summer. Through the summer blue. blue you've got the blue and it, the blue. I have at home a pink, a pink and I've seen kind of an off dirty white one that's not my favorite but in the right setting it's an excellent plant it's an too. an excellent plant. And I see you've got the spider wart, which is a plant I didn't expect to see here. Right, and it grows great with little uh, amounts of water. Just a drip system around it. Just the clumps are spreading, the flowers are bright. And it's a beautiful grassy type foliage on it. Nice one to have in the zero. It's great, I love it. The preceding was a production of New Mexico State University. The views and opinions in this program are those of the author and do not necessarily represent the views and opinions of the NMSU Board of Regents.